Welcome back. Needy is an unstable prisoner being held for an unknown crime she committed. Due to the trauma she experienced, Needy suffers from a violent tendency that causes her to attack a nurse and a warden. As a result, the warden puts her in solitary confinement every time Needy causes a commotion. Needy explains that she used to be an ordinary girl. Until one day it all began two months ago in a small town named Devil's Kettle. The town was named after a mysterious waterfall rumored to be a door to another dimension. At a high school in this town, Needy is a nerdy girl who happens to be a best friend with a popular girl named Jennifer. The two have been friends since they were little. But when they hit high school, Needy and Jennifer become so different that people question their friendship. One day, Jennifer asks Needy to go with her to a local bar at night. Jennifer tells Needy that a local indie band named Low Shoulder will perform there, and she intends to hook up with its lead singer. Needy refuses at first because she has already made a plan to hang out with her boyfriend. However, Jennifer manages to convince Needy to go with her instead. Later that night, Needy prepares to hang out with Jennifer. While Needy chooses a dress to wear tonight, she is accompanied by Chip, her boyfriend. Soon after, Jennifer arrives, and Needy can sense her from afar. Chip finds it weird that Needy can tell if Jennifer is close, but he shrugs it off. Chip tells his girlfriend that her friendship with Jennifer is unbelievable since they don't have anything in common. However, Needy insists that Jennifer is truly her best friend while showing off their friendship necklace. After saying goodbye to Chip, Needy and Jennifer arrive at the local bar. There, they see some guys such as Craig the Jocks, who has a crush on Jennifer, Ahmet the exchange student from India, and Roman the sheriff, who had slept with Jennifer the other day. Not long after that, the low shoulder band arrives at the bar. Seeing their arrival, Jennifer excitedly introduces herself to the lead vocalist, Nikolai. After getting to know each other's names, Jennifer offers to buy Nikolai a drink, and he gladly accepts it. As Jennifer goes to grab the drinks, Needy overhears Nikolai's conversation with his band about Jennifer's virginity. Hearing that, Needy walks up to Nikolai and scolds him for talking impolitely about her best friend. Moreover, Needy tells Nikolai that Jennifer is indeed a virgin and she won't let him mess with her. Needy then tries to warn Jennifer about Nikolai and his band, but Jennifer ignores her warning. Jennifer reveals that she doesn't care because she isn't a virgin anymore. After that, Nikolai's band begins their performance as guests watch them. Amidst the performance, an electricity short causes a fire behind the stage. Soon after, the bargoers dive into a panic while the fire spreads around the place. Chaos ensues as everyone is running for their lives. Needy pulls Jennifer's hand and leads her to the bathroom. They manage to escape and skate through a small window inside the bathroom. When they reach safety, Nikolai approaches them and casually offers a whiskey to Jennifer. While Jennifer is in shock, Nikolai takes advantage of it and tells her to go with him to his van. Seeing that her best friend is taken away by strangers, Needy tries her best to convince Jennifer not to go. However, Jennifer tells her to shut up as she enters Nikolai's van. Needy watches helplessly when Nikolai's van drives away with Jennifer inside. When Needy returns home, she calls Chip to tell him about the bar incident and Jennifer's situation. However, Chip tells Needy to ignore Jennifer because she doesn't even listen to Needy. Therefore, Chip explains that it's Jennifer's own mistake if something happens to her. Suddenly, Needy hears a ring on her house doorbell. Needy walks downstairs and doesn't see anyone when she opens the front door. But when she is about to return to her room, Needy hears a sound coming from the kitchen. Needy decides to brave herself and check the kitchen. Suddenly, Jennifer shows up on her back with blood and wounds all over her face and body. Needy asks Jennifer what happened to her, but Jennifer stays silent with a creepy smile forming on her lips. Jennifer then ransacks Needy's fridge and begins to eat a raw chicken. When Needy tries to stop her, Jennifer lets out a devilish scream and throws up black goo all over the floor. Needy tries to calm her best friend, but when she realizes that Jennifer doesn't have a pulse, Needy tries to get away as far as she can. Jennifer manages to stop Needy from calling the police and proceeds to bite Needy's neck. But suddenly, Jennifer throws Needy away and escapes from her house. The following day, Needy seems shocked after the traumatic event she endured last night. Suddenly, Jennifer shows up and greets her as if nothing happened at all. Needy is confused to see Jennifer's normal condition, contrary to Jennifer she saw before. Jennifer acts normally and doesn't seem bothered by the fact that people she knows died in the incident last night. At the same time, 
Needy believes that what she saw at her house is real because she remembers cleaning up the black goo coming from Jennifer. That day, the school mourns the loss of lives their town suffered last night, except for Jennifer, who jokes about people's death. After the class, Needy meets up with Chip to tell him about a weird encounter she had with Jennifer last night. But sadly, Chip doesn't believe Needy's story. Meanwhile, at the school field, Jonas mourns Craig, his best friend. Suddenly, Jennifer approaches him and tells Jonas that she met with Craig before his death. Jennifer lies to Jonas by telling him that Craig wishes to see them together as a couple. After that, Jennifer seduces Jonas and lures him into the wood. As Jonas and Jennifer make out in the wood, animals gather around them. Suddenly, Jennifer pushes Jonas to the tree and reveals her true horrific form. A teacher hears Jonas's scream from afar and decides to investigate it. Unfortunately, he finds Jonas's mangled body in the forest. Soon after, Jonas's family and the authorities swarm the scene. At the same time, Jennifer manages to escape without leaving any traces. After the bar incident, Needy learns that the low shoulder band gained popularity and was even hailed as heroes. Later at night, Jennifer calls Needy to tell her she is in a good mood. Amidst the call with Jennifer, Chip calls Needy to inform her about the death of Jonas, who happens to be his neighbor. While waiting for Needy to end her call with Chip, Jennifer burns her own tongue and doesn't even flinch. Needy returns to her call with Jennifer and tell her that she had to meet with Chip. At the same time, Jennifer expresses that she thinks Chip is cute, making Needy uncomfortable. When Needy arrives to meet Chip, she tries to calm her boyfriend, who is shaken by the news. Needy thinks it is not coincidental that these incidents are happening around their town. The following day, everyone is affected by the grim news except Jennifer. Meanwhile, Lowe's shoulders' popularity peaked as they signed with a major record. One month later, the school commemorates the incidents that struck their town last month. Contrary to Jennifer's thriving condition last month, Jennifer now looks pale, weak, and sick. The teacher then tells the student that Nikolai's band decides to share their profit as a charity for their town and that their song has become an anthem in their community. Hearing that, Needy feels furious because she knows Nikolai's band isn't as heroic as it was rumored. After the class, Needy notices Jennifer's condition and asks her about it. Jennifer tells her that maybe it's because her power is waning out. Before Needy can ask further about it, a boy named Colin approaches them. Colin asks Jennifer to go out on a date. But Jennifer turns him down. After that, Needy tells Jennifer that Colin is a nice guy and seems cool to her. Upon hearing that, Jennifer changes her mind and decides to accept Colin's offer. Jennifer asks Colin to meet her tonight, and Colin gladly obliges. Soon after, Chip shows up to greet Needy. Before Jennifer flirts with Chip, Needy immediately kisses her boyfriend to mark her territory. Later at night, Chip goes to Needy's place, and they decide to wrestle for the first time. Meanwhile, Colin drives to the address Jennifer texts him and arrives at an empty house. Out of curiosity, Colin enters the house and finds Jennifer waiting for him. Jennifer begins seducing Colin, but he realizes that Jennifer's eyes are normal. However, it is too late as Jennifer manages to pin him down and consume Colin. On the other side, Needy's uncommon connection with Jennifer makes her able to sense that Jennifer is ending someone's life. She gets frightened in the middle of a wrestling session with Chip and decides to head out to find Jennifer and Colin. On the road, Needy stumbles upon a feral-looking Jennifer and avoids hitting her with the car. But then, Jennifer suddenly lands on Needy's windshield, forcing her to reverse and escape from Jennifer. Needy returns to her house in panic and recalls all the weird things she saw these days. After she calms herself, Needy decides to sleep but finds Jennifer hiding inside her bed. Jennifer looks thriving like she was last month, contrary to the pale and sick version Needy saw this morning. In the heat of a moment, Jennifer seduces Needy, and the two make out in the bed. But then, Needy returns to her sense, and realizes that Jennifer manages to control her for a moment. After that, Jennifer reveals the truth to Needy. In a flashback, Jennifer tells what happens to her and Nikolai's band after the fire. It turns out that Nikolai and his band are occult believers who plan to sacrifice a virgin in exchange for their popularity. Believing Jennifer is a virgin, they drive her to the waterfall and tie her down. Nikolai begins to chant the satanic verse and proceeds to sacrifice Jennifer. After that, Nikolai throws the ritual knife into the mysterious hole by the waterfall. Jennifer explains that she somehow returns to life with an insatiable hunger for human flesh. 
That night, she almost consumes Needy but realizes Needy is her friend, so she goes hunting Ahmed instead. Since then, Jennifer realized that she had to consume humans to be in her best shape. Upon hearing Jennifer's wild story, Needy can't comprehend the weight of her situation. Therefore, she asks Jennifer to leave her room. Feeling betrayed, Jennifer jumps down from two-story windows instead of walking through the front door. The following morning, Needy attends Colin's funeral and witnesses the sorrow Jennifer brings upon her victim's family. After that, Needy visits the library to research the paranormal and occult. She decides to do this in order to understand Jennifer's curse better. After reading through some books, Needy learns that if the offering isn't a virgin, the woman will be possessed by the devil and wreak havoc upon human lives. Needy also learns that to end the curse, she will need to stab the heart of the devil-possessed woman when she is hungry. When Needy is deep in thought, Chip shows up to tell her about the upcoming school dance. Needy warns Chip not to go to the event for his safety. Needy explains all her discoveries about Jennifer's condition, but sadly, Chip doesn't believe her. The couple gets into an argument, and Chip thinks that Needy is breaking up with him. On the dance night, Chip decides to attend the event despite Needy's warning. Before heading out to the dance, Chip's mother gives him pepper spray just in case. Meanwhile, Jennifer realizes that her frail condition signifies that she requires new flesh soon. On his way to the dance, Chip meets Jennifer, who shows up out of nowhere. Jennifer asks him to go with her to talk about Needy. Jennifer then lies to Chip by telling him that Needy is having an affair with Colin. Upon convincing Chip with her fake accusation toward Needy, Jennifer seduces and takes him to an abandoned swimming pool. Meanwhile, Needy's connection with Jennifer makes her able to sense that Chip is in Jennifer's hand right now. Needy immediately sets out to Chip's house to confirm that Chip is in danger. On the other side, Chip manages to return to his sense and denies Jennifer's approaches. Jennifer is enraged by it and decides to throw Chip into the water. While Chip fights for his life, Needy somehow manages to track them down to the abandoned building. Needy suddenly shows up and pulls Jennifer away from him just before Chip loses consciousness. Chip is dying from his wounds but manages to pass the pepper spray to Needy. When Jennifer reappears from the water, Needy sprays her, causing Jennifer to let out the black goo onto them. With demonic power, Jennifer hovers into the air while Needy and Chip get out of the water. Jennifer and Needy lock into a confrontation where Needy mocks her for not being a good friend since they were little. Needy reveals that Jennifer is jealous of everything she owns, revealing Jennifer's true nature. Just before Jennifer put her hand on Needy, the wounded ship thrust Jennifer's body with an iron pole, forcing her to escape. Needy goes to her dying boyfriend, who tells her he should have believed Needy from the beginning. Soon after, Chip breathes his last in Needy's arms. Upon returning to her home, Needy is devastated and goes into despair. She then plans to avenge her boyfriend's death by breaking into Jennifer's house. The two desperately fight to the end. While Jennifer manages to land a bite on Needy's shoulder, Needy manages to draw a cross on Jennifer's body with her knife. Jennifer levitates from the bed, and the two struggles to gain the upper hand. Suddenly, Needy rips their friendship necklace from Jennifer's neck and stabs her heart with the knife. After successfully ending Jennifer's curse in life, Jennifer's mother walks into the room and witnesses Needy ending her daughter's life without knowing the truth. As a result, Needy is imprisoned, and her mind slowly deteriorates after all the trauma she goes through. While in solitary confinement, Needy reveals she is now cursed with a demonic power because of Jennifer's bite. In the end, Needy uses her new ability to escape from prison. She then coincidentally stumbles upon the ritual knife Nikolai used to sacrifice Jennifer along her way. With that, Needy decides to track down Nikolai's band and executes them all in their hotel room. At the end of the day, dealing with occultism will only result in pain and misery for those involved and innocent who doesn't deserve it. The End